Save time using Invivo 5 and TX Studio, 50 tips and techniques for maximum efficiency. Created and presented by Douglas Chen and DDS, founder and CEO of Clinically Correct Incorporated. The program is organized into several distinct parts. Part one will look at configuring default preferences, such as setting up your default file open and saving pathways. Part two will look at hotkeys and navigational shortcuts, which will allow us to navigate through the software much quicker. Part three will look at specific time-saving techniques, such as implant planning or nerve tracing, where I can really dial in your technique and help you save time. Part four will be looking at common errors to avoid. I've been teaching the software for a long time and I've seen a lot of people use the software tools, sometimes in a slow manner or an incorrect manner. We're gonna look at some of those. In part five, we'll be using the automatic features. The software has multiple things that can be set up automatically and that can save time and work on your end as well. Tip number 17, using the keyboard and mouse for zooming and panning. This is the standard way in which zooming and panning is done anywhere within the software, regardless of whether it's a slice or a 3D rendering. To zoom, you'll hold control on the keyboard, and while holding that, hold the left mouse click as well, and then when you move the mouse up and down, that will zoom in and out. To pan or shift the image around to recenter it, you'll hold shift on the keyboard, hold the left click on the mouse, and then move the mouse to center it. Now let's take a look at how that looks within the software. Now we're going to look at how to perform the standard zooming and panning applications within the software. The standard way to zoom is to hold control with the keyboard, hold left click with the mouse, and then move the mouse up and down to zoom in or, in or out further. Now to shift this image into proper orientation or centering, you're going to hold shift on the keyboard and hold left click on the mouse and then you can shift the image. Then you can zoom in further. This is different than double clicking a single window and enlarging that way because even from here you can zoom in further or zoom out if the need arises. Double click again to exit and um, each window within a multi-window frame can be zoomed or panned uh, separately. So being able to do this can really give you some, a lot of flexibility as well as make it quicker sometimes than double clicking if you know you're going to be zooming in further than the double click application will go. That's the same within the volume rendering. The quick zoom icon that's available here will only zoom in to a certain level, but if you need to go further, you can use the control and left click on the mouse to go further, or if you needed to zoom out slightly. It can also be a great way just to center the image pretty quickly. And um, it also works within any other area of the software, whether you're looking at cross sections or uh, pan slice features or any area of the software, that standard zooming and shifting feature will work. It's one of the most de essential features of the software actually because you, you do want to be zooming and panning and it's one of the only things that really isn't listed as an icon or a button so if you weren't really told or taught that you might be using the software for a long time without knowing that it exists and that can really save a lot of time when you're trying to just get right to a particular spot zoom in, get a nice measurement, and move on. If you need to reset any of those images, regardless of which way you zoomed in or zoomed out or shifted, the reset button will always take you back to normal. Tip number 21, perform image reorientation before reconstructions. This technique is one of the most important steps to do before making any image reconstructions with a case. This is so because reorientation is an essential step to make sure that reconstructions are correctly created. Furthermore, it's a great technique for efficiency in that you'll minimize the amount of back and forth that you have to do when making a perfect reconstruction. For example, if the patient wasn't orientated correctly in the sagittal tilt, this will perpetuate errors into subsequent reconstructions, like panoramic images. Within a pano image, this will result in reconstruction errors that mimic traditional positioning errors where the patient was tilted too far forward or too far backwards. Improper orientations can also lead to measurement errors within cross sections due to the oblique slicing that can occur. We're going to explore this technique and the importance of it within the software next. Before we look at how to reorientate an image within the software, I want to show the importance of it with more detail and some examples. In this particular case, we have a patient that's positioned where they're tilted too far forward. Now you can check that by scrolling through the slices and seeing that this occlusal plane is definitely not level. It's probably the most important thing to look at when you're looking at the sagittal orientation. It's trying to level up the occlusal plane. That particular orientation error 
can lead to all sorts of problems when you get into cross-sections or panoramic reconstructions. I've just jumped over to the art section view tab and you can see here in the semi-pano reconstruction that we have a pretty severe kind of look to it. It's, it's an excessive kind of curve of sphere or a smile and there's a lot of distortional air as well. The bigger challenge to this type of positioning error is going to be the oblique slices that can be created. Normally when you make a slice, you want to have it parallel with the occlusal plane. And if you do it like this, you're getting essentially an oblique slice where it's going through more of the mandible than it really should be going, and it's going to present a slice that looks bigger than it really is. So if we take a measurement on this, and from this point right here, if I go down to about the level of the IA canal, I'm going to get about 19 millimeters right there. But if I did that same measurement but followed in a way that would be more parallel with the occlusal plane, it's going to be something more like that, and the measurement is different by a few millimeters. Now, in planning implant cases, a few millimeters can make the biggest difference between injuring a nerve and not, and having a successful treatment or not. So that type of positional orientation error is very dangerous, and not only do you want to minimize that from a time-saving aspect of not having to go back and forth to correct that, you just want to make sure that you always do that as a standard protocol for creating cross-sections or panoramic images. Now to correct this error, what we would do is starting off within the section tab, just set it up right from the start so we don't have to go back and forth or worry about it at all. And in this case, because the sagittal tilt was off, we're going to correct that platform the most. Uh, click on the reorientation icon these wheels appear around the different anatomical planes and you can adjust each one as necessary. You can use your mouse wheel to scroll through as you're doing the reorientation and just make sure your level are squared off with anatomical structures. Sometimes patients are slightly asymmetric so you do have to take that in consideration but the general rule of thumb is within the sagittal tilt to be level with the occlusal plane to be centered in the midline for the axial orientation and then the coronal to not be tilted as well. You want to be pretty center. Looking at sometimes the turbinates or the nasal septum can help, but again, the anatomy can be deviated or asymmetric, so you have to take that with a little bit of a grain of salt. Once you've orientated in a position that looks correct, just click on the reorientation button again, and that new position locks into place. If you save the file, the new orientation will be saved within the in vivo file as well.